All right. Uh, the guys are just coming in uh, with injuries now. Uh, I already get their injuries looked at now, so I don't really have a report for you. Um, as far as the game last night, I had a chance to go back and obviously look at the tape. And, um, and so uh, you're playing a good football team. You can't have the, the mistakes uh, that we made um, uh, in, in close games. So it's something we can learn from. We'll take from that, whether it's turnover this field goal, you know, whatever it might be, uh, dropped interceptions. We all we all had a part of it as coaches and players. We can all do do a better job and uh, and will. Um, there's no moral victories or any of this. Stuff. That's not how we roll. The guys that were in the game uh, are in there to win the game, and it doesn't matter who, where, when, why. We're, we're that's how we roll. And I was, you know, the thing that I took as a positive was we play extremely hard and aggressive football. And uh, that's something we can continue to build on. we got to get rid of a couple of these mistakes, and uh, we're an inch or two away from uh, getting the turnovers, the turnover battle flipped around and going in our direction. And um, into their part, uh, I mean, they're, they made some they made some plays, and uh, uh, their quarterback in particular made some uh, big throws and, and did a nice job. Um, anyways, with that, time's yours. Coach, Cole Harvin only played nine snaps. I know he had a pretty good first half. What went behind the, the thought process of limited, the limited snaps that he got after the first half? Yeah, there wasn't any real reason behind that. Um, we try to keep the guys on a rotation the best we can, and and uh, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way uh, with, with his number being in there. So, with McCoy fumble that you mentioned, he carries the ball a little bit differently, but it doesn't seem like in the past when you had him, he had a fumbling issue. Was that just something where? You yeah, listen, that traditionally is not. He has not been a fumbler throughout his career, and he's had the the two here, and they've come at bad times, right? So. And not that a fumble ever comes at a good time, but he has not been a fumbler, and uh, I would expect it to go back that way. Coach, you say that there's no excuses, but when you're playing without the MVP, playing without a lot of guys, this has got to be in some ways a, you got to feel pretty good about your effort against a really good football team, and you didn't have a lot of players. Yeah, well, the the positive is the effort, um, and and we can. You, you win you win games with uh, that, uh, and then eliminate some of the mistakes so that that's a key right now and i i really don't care who's in or or not in i don't get into all that i expect the guys that are in to go win the game that's what i expect so the whole moral victory thing i'm not into um i i, I appreciate the effort though that the guys are putting in we have some young guys that are having an opportunity to play that that's going to help us down the road and um uh, but we've got to maintain the attitude that we have and as you start getting guys back, um, the, they continue on with that same attitude also. So it's, uh, and then, then you've got something uh, going there. And it's not, it's not the guys who didn't play, um, it's the numbers. So you, you do this thing as a team. So uh, you, get, you get kind of low on certain positions, then you don't have that rotation going. And, and that's the part that ends up being a little bit tough. But the guys battle through that. Sorry. Um, I know you said you rewatched last night's game. Based on evaluating that, what do you feel like you can build on now, having almost two games of film to sort of build on if he is indeed the starter? Yeah, so um, we're, we're playing a good football team coming up here, good defense, and, um, and, and so we'll go through and look at what they do, study them. Uh, we'll come up with what we feel is best against them and for – uh, for Matt, if he ends up being that guy in there, um, and then and then we go. So it wouldn't be any different if it's Pat, Matt, you know, whoever. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Matt's going to wake up this morning a little stiff. He, he you know he he took a couple of hits in there and and uh, and played a full game, which he hasn't done for a while. So, uh, but there's some things that if, if he's asked to play again, that um, you know that. that you see that he does well, and uh, and I guess going back to your question, you can build on some of those. Patrick, <clears throat> Patrick told the NBC broadcast that if last night had been a playoff game, he would have been in the game. Is that something the organization would agree with, or is there an expectation? That Isn't that what you love about him? <laughs> huh? 
I mean, he was telling me he wanted to go back in after he heard it the first time in, in the Denver game. So that, that's him. I mean, who wants to slow that down, right? So um, that thinking, at least. And then it's important that the medical people take care of it from there. So, But that, that's how you want them. You want them wired that way. Um, you want to play last night. You want, you know, that... Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, we you don't see a lot of that in this league right now. Uh, um, so, you, you know, not not uh, uh, like that out where the where the quarterbacks are saying things like that or people are saying things like that. So, um, but there, there's a lot of heart. It's normally the people that you know, there's a small minority that um, you know that is opposite that thinking. So, what is the next step in the evaluation <clears throat> process? Last week. He was out there throwing, and I know you want to take it week to week with him, but like this week, what are you hoping to see out of him before you make a determination that this guy is getting closer to return? Yeah, so I leave that, I leave that up to the docs I'm, uh, as far as that goes and uh, and how they, and, and Rick, and how they evaluate it and, it, and then past communication with them. Um, I look at the, the visual part. Can he do the things that he needs to be able to do um, to play in a game? Um, and then... I'm always asking how you feel on that. So if I ask, uh, he normally tells me how he feels. And so I'd probably, you know, add that into the equation. But the, those, the docs have to do that. I don't, I don't claim to be an orthopod at all. Or, so. and Coach, you talked about last night, uh, the fourth and three you talked about. But was there any thought on uh, third and three? as good as Damian Williams had looked when he came in for LeSean. Was there any thought about it being four-down territory at that point, or were you not having those thoughts on third down? Uh, well, I did what I did on it. I mean, you know, that's what that's what I did. So played it the way I thought it needed to be played, first, second, and third down. Would the decision possibly have been different if Pat had been available on fourth and three? Um, I don't know. I'd have to have felt it during the game and seen what we had dialed up uh, or available, how we were playing. You, know. you mentioned before sort of the eagerness that Tyreek had and sort of his rehab and trying to get back, and you guys sort of trying to talk to him about both the short and the long-term benefits. How much of that do you expect this week with Patrick understanding his eagerness to get on the field but also trying to understand what's what's correct in the short and the long? Yeah, so those two are wired very similar. You know. Um, and so we talk to him, and everybody's different. Everybody's different. But, uh, you know, I, that's why we don't put a time on guys. You, you can't do that. So I'd say it's similar from the fact that we'll see how they how they feel medically. Are they safe? That whole deal. So. Is it, but is it safe to assume or expect that Patrick will be at practice on Wednesday? Oh, yeah. What he can do? Yeah, I mean, unless he has a cold or sick or something, I, mean, I, I would imagine. I just double check. A couple more guys. The first time that since he's been the guy that he's had to sit out. I wondered how he handled that during the game. What kind of input you received from him during the game, even with the conversations with Matt. It seemed like you guys on the bench together. There. Yeah, yeah, he was great on the bench. Um, he, he, you know, he's pretty high strung. I had to pull him back off the field. Two or three times, you can't go out on the field without a uniform on. So, um, I mean, just to congratulate his teammates is what, the reason I was pulling back. But um, he was into it. Thought he handled it as well as you can. He, he, I'm not sure he, you know, he wasn't. He obviously didn't like being in that role, but he handled it well. Coach, last night we didn't talk about that. The last five minutes much about the timeout part of it. You guys called the timeout at 2.41. It was your last one. What goes into your thought process on letting that thing bleed down to the two-minute warning and having that timeout afterwards? Yeah, well, you, normally you get to that four-minute mark and then you start thinking about the getting your timeouts and burning your timeouts. Um, we've got a chart that we work off of, and it's uh, pretty accurate. A lot of study goes into that. It's right there on that, like, couple of seconds. Is that a really close one when it's right before? Every second counts. Um, Andy, uh, after going through the video, were there, would you say there were a lot of things that Matt did last night that you would you want to see corrected before the next game, assuming he plays? Or did he have a pretty clean game in that regard? Did he, if that makes any sense. Yeah. 
Now, listen, I thought he I thought he played well um, for for the situation that he, he was put in. Um, are there things that he that he needs to do better and they will go back and look? Yeah, I mean, every player does that. So, uh, but for where he was and what he was asked to do, I thought he handled it very well. And um, and he'll clean up, you know, the other things, whether he's playing or not playing. He'll he'll make sure he gets those cleaned up. Last one, Dave. Oh. I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask about Chad Andy. How did he look in practice last week? And you imagine uh, you guys going to activate him this week? Yeah, so um, I'll get with Brett on that. Um, I thought he did well. He got, you know, he was a little bit sore early, and uh, but uh, we'll go through and look at that. Evaluate that in you know, the next couple of days. Last one, B. I just want to ask one particular question on a, a particular play. Early in the fourth quarter, it was the 25 yard pass to Sammy Watkins that Moore had, where I think it's Preston Smith was coming down on him. When you watch that on film, just how difficult is a play like that for a quarterback that hadn't played in a couple of years and just to stand there and deliver that ball and a guy coming down? Just how impressive is yeah. that? Yeah, he had a couple of those. He had the, the throw to Kels for the touchdown. That was another one. Um, and Kels did a nice job on it, but but for him, Matt, to get that ball out with somebody right in his face was good. The one to Sammy was another one. He had a couple of those so that um, that where he had to, you know, he had to throw it on time, trust his guys, um, and not having played with those guys for about you know a little over a couple months here, it's uh, you know it's pretty pretty good job for him. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay.